Fritz, stop knocking the camera. It doesn't have that synthetic-y smell at all. Don't rely on my memory for anything. Clean Musk is the one for me. Welcome back. We are coming into summer down under here in Australia and the weather is starting to heat up. This video has been requested quite a bit throughout the year, uh, probably mostly from Northern Hemisphere people who were having quite a intense summer. And I apologize that I didn't get around to doing this a little bit sooner. Anyway, today is clean and fresh fragrances. First up is one that I spoke about in a video that I filmed about an hour ago. So hopefully if I remember to put them up in the order that I filmed them, you will have already heard about this one. Uh, this is Liri or Liris by Santa Maria Novella. This is obviously an iris dominant fragrance. But what I really like about this one is that I think it's been blended with some really some maybe some soft florals, but also some musky notes. So it comes across as being very fresh and very uh, uplifting and airy and not heavy at all. Uh, it does have a slight powderiness to it but not so much that it would be overwhelming to wear it on a hot day. I think this one still suits warm weather really, really well. And in fact, I have been wearing it in the warm weather and it's performed really, really beautifully. It's very subtle. It's not too sweet. Uh, it just smells like clean skin, clean linen without being that really um, laundry detergent-esque, uh, you know, clean linen sort of fragrance, which is not something that I tend to love. However, if we are going to talk about white musk scents, then I have two here that I do tend to gravitate towards. Now, I do tend to layer these with other things generally, but I also have been known to just wear these to the gym as is. The first one is Narciso Rodriguez Pure Musk. Now I only have the 20 ml bottle of this which as you can see is nearly done and I don't think I would I would repurchase this one personally. I just find that the white musk note in here is a little bit sharp and does lean a little bit screechy for my personal taste. I'm really fussy with white musk notes in fragrances now. Um, hey Fritzy! I just find that they can be really, really screechy and sort of sharp and headache inducing. And whilst I do love many fragrances from the Narcisa Rodriguez line, and I do think they do musks really, really well, this pure musk is just a little bit too screechy for my taste. So I will use up this 20 mil. I don't intend to repurchase it, but I do have another white musk fragrance that satisfies the same urge or need that I that I want to satisfy with this one without being screechy. So the white musk fragrance that I like to wear is Clean Musk from Sarah Horowitz. She's an independent perfumer based in the US and I've tried quite a few of her fragrances and I really really enjoy actually a lot of them. I also have her amber fragrance, which is called Origin Story. But in any case, she also has these um, Perfumers Palette base note fragrances. I can't remember how many are in the line, but this Clean Musk one is really, really good. It's a really pretty, clean, fresh musk that doesn't lean too sharp. It actually doesn't smell it doesn't have that synthetic-y smell at all and it's got a slight sweetness to it. So I think there she has put other things in here that have made it just a little bit more vibrant. I think there might be a like a really, really subtle citrus notes in here, possibly. I, I'm really, I don't know for sure. I haven't looked up the notes. Maybe I should look up the notes. Uh, actually, on her website, it really it literally just says that it's just a musk note. But I, I, I sort of get really soft floral facets, maybe even some slightly marine or aquatic nuances from this, but it's so, so subtle. And you know, I don't like aquatic fragrances, but it, this doesn't come off as being too aquatic. It doesn't come off as an aquatic fragrance, but when I'm comparing it to the Pure Musk from Narciso Rodriguez, Fritz, stop knocking the camera. I just feel like this leans a little bit more aquatic uh, and fresh 
maybe slightly floral and maybe a little bit of a hint of a citrus vibrancy but it's not citrusy by any means it's just it has a vibrancy about it that I don't think the pure musk from Narciso Rodriguez has and which I think maybe they're attempting to achieve by using this really crisp sharp almost screechy musk note so this one is my absolute hands down favorite when it comes to just a simple pure white musk note sort of fragrance uh, clean musk by Sarah Horowitz is the one for me and and as you can see I have used quite a bit of it and I will be repurchasing it I think she has changed the bottles of these now but I'm assuming it's the same fragrance I'm hoping it's the same fragrance because I will be repurchasing it next up is one that is actually fairly new to my collection I I've been lurking around this perfume for years and years and years I absolutely adore the bottles that this fragrance comes in although I purchased secondhand from somebody a uh, the 30 ml which comes in a different bottle so it's not as exciting to look at this is L'Air du Temps by uh, Nina Ricci and this is a really beautiful soft musky floral scent this is such an interesting fragrance it does smell like it is from a different era so I'm not going to sit here and pretend that if you're into totally modern fragrances that you are absolutely going to love this uh, this has a lot of carnation in it some aldehydes there's also some I think uh, aromatic herbal tones to it as well there's some spices uh, I think there's quite a bit of uh, iris in here as well you know violet um, musk all of those really glamorous old world perfumery notes that's what this fragrance is all about to me when I first spray it the florals almost come off a little bit um, watery and transparent but then there is this creamy lotiony vibe to it as well so it smells like a really expensive skin lotion it's not overly sweet but it also has some powdery facets to it as well which lifts it off the skin and makes it really airy and light it's just super super elegant it smells white it, it probably would make a really good wedding fragrance too if you wanted something with a bit more of a vintage bent to it if you've never tried L'Air du Temps I, I definitely recommend it if you like your light musky violet iris carnation type fragrances I, I, you must give this a go it does come in a spectacular bottle I love the bottle that it comes in when it's not the 30 mil in hindsight I wish I'd waited and just bought a bottle of the 50 mil but I got this for a steal off somebody and it's pretty much full so um, I've been wearing this a lot at night time and to bed but I have worn it on a couple of really hot days and I think it just matches the white linen aesthetic really really well next is one that's a little bit left field I am not overly familiar with this I've been sampling it and I've I can't at first I couldn't decide if I liked it or not but I think I'm leaning towards I like it this is called yin transformation and it's by the harmonist I'll put a picture of the bottle up on the screen as well so you can see what the bottle looks like obviously I only have this decant I, I think the reason I ordered this one was because it was touted as being sort of a creamy sandalwood fragrance but I get really <laughs> sort of shampooy fruity florals out of this when I tested it it didn't smell how I was expecting it to smell so at first I was sort of thinking oh I don't really I'm not really vibing with this but the more I played with it and the more I wore it the more I actually started to like it so this has a really vibrant fruity note in the opening and I think it is described as being a mandarin orange and I guess I do get definitely a really juicy citrusy sort of element to this and then there's florals in here which when I read the note listing I can't say that I get those particular florals I think the florals that are listed are orchid rose uh, ylang ylang and 
To me, uh, I feel like the florals I get in here are actually more not as fleshy as those sorts of florals. The, the florals to me come off as being very watery and subtle and sort of more like a white floral, not, not like a orange blossom or a tuberose, but you know, maybe a freesia or something like that, you know, something that's really light and petally. So it, it's a really interesting when I read the note listing, I'm not really getting the elements in the note listing at all. The overall effect is that it's a very crisp, sort of watery, shampooy, but it's not so shampooy that it smells like you've spritzed, you know, herbal essences all over you, but it just has this really fresh, watery cleanness about it. And then there is sandalwood and um, musk in the base. I think for me, really, this just dries down to a really pleasant, musky, fresh floral fragrance. And I really, I, you know, I don't think it's groundbreaking and I don't know how much these are, but I have a feeling that the Harmonist fragrances might be a little bit pricey. So I don't know if I would pay the price for a full bottle of this, but certainly I find this to be a very pleasant wear. And it does, it does resemble probably a raft of sort of fruity, musky florals that are on the market but i just i feel like this one the the thing that sets this one apart for me is that it doesn't seem to utilize really screechy synthetic musky notes and i really quite enjoy that mandarin orange in the opening because it has a juiciness about it without being too tart that's yin transformation from the harmonist i have been wearing this one to the gym and really liking it next up we take a slightly different turn in terms of scent profile and this might be a little bit controversial in the sense that um, a lot of people might not consider this to be a good one to wear on a hot day per se but this is champs elysees by Guerlain and this one is based on mimosa. This is a very clean, creamy floral. It smells to me like an expensive skin lotion. It's not as airy as the L'Air du Temps though, so it does have more of this creamy spa-like feel to it. I think this smells really elevated and a lot more expensive than it is. I, I mean, I don't know how these are priced anymore, but I picked this one up really quite cheaply, I would say, several years ago. And then I started wearing it a lot and then I stopped wearing it because I think they changed the bottle and I think there might have been murmurs of it being discontinued or something. So I, I, I backed off on wearing it, but just smelling it now even. This is so, so beautiful. It also has, to me, I get like maybe a slight hint of greenness to it as well. Not grassiness, but I don't know, just sort of a fresh green aspect. I don't think that there are any sort of green fresh notes listed necessarily, but then the greenness must be coming from perhaps another floral or something like that, or maybe even one of the fruits. And then there's, you know, sandalwood and, and stuff in the base to give it that nice, smooth, gentle, woody dry down. Yeah, this is, this I think is a fantastic one for, you know, feeling fresh and clean, but also very expensive and elegant. Elegant. I can't do a white shirt clean fragrances video without mentioning this, but I'm not going to belabor the point because I have talked about this fragrance and its sister many, many times on this channel to death, really. <laughs> this is Chanel number no. five, Low. I, I don't know, if you haven't been around for very long, my journey to enjoying number no. five was quite a rapid transition. I went from absolutely despising number no. five for decades, basically. I went to Japan on holiday and I was at the Chanel counter at the airport and I was having a sniff of the Eau Premier and the Low, which is this one. And I ended up buying a bottle of Eau Premier at the airport. We were there in winter time because we'd been on a skiing trip, but I just remember the airport feeling really stuffy and I felt really hot and uh, I smelled Eau Premier and just went wow and I, I bought it on the spot but I have a feeling that maybe I had bought the number five parfum before I had bought 
the O premiere, there is a video somewhere in much in the history of my channel <laughs> where I talk about how I came to liking number five. I think I'm getting my timelines mixed up. But as I started, as I wore through that bottle of O premiere, I realized that it's actually got quite a lot of sweetness to it. And uh, I find the citruses in the low to be a little bit more brisk and uplifting for a hot day. Even though I love them both, I could I could wear them interchangeably. I, you know, I'm not wedded to one or the other, but that's why I, I circled back and, and picked up a bottle of the low at when I was almost out of my eau premiere. So when this one runs out, I have to decide which one I'm going to buy next because I think the next one I'll buy will be a big bottle because I, I just wear so much of this stuff. I wear this to the gym, I wear it on hot days, I take it to the beach, <laughs> I wear it everywhere. I wear it to work. I think it's such an elegant, unassuming scent. You know, there is aldehydes in here, but the aldehydes and the florals aren't as dense in here and in the Eau Premiere as they are in the original number five. And it doesn't have that ambery tone to it either. I think that the original number five, even though it's an aldehydic fragrance, there's still that sort of vintagey, ambery-esque base through it. And I, I actually really enjoy the original number five now, but that's because I transitioned to it after, you know, becoming so familiar with the low and the eau premiere so they really were my stepping stones to enjoying number five however i would never wear number five to the beach or or to the gym or anything like that that's just madness uh, but this is just so light and easy to wear and pleasant and it just smells clean and sparkly and it's beautiful. So number five, Low by Chanel. Didn't I say I wasn't gonna talk that much about it and then I go and ramble on about it for five minutes? Okay, the next one probably wouldn't be much of a surprise either. Uh, this is Fleur de Peau by Diptyque. This is another sort of orissey, ambrette type fragrance. I think it also has aldehydes in it. What I like about this one is it smells cold. It has a crispness to it, but it also has a body to it, which I want to describe as being lotion-like, but it doesn't smell creamy. It doesn't have a creamy texture like, say, the Champs-Élysées. Um, this is very cold and it's very crisp and I don't know, I guess in my mind, you know, maybe if I stuck some really expensive skin lotion in an ice tray and shoved it in the freezer, <laughs> it would be like that. It'd be really, it wouldn't be creamy because it wouldn't be, you know, melted. So it has like structure, it's crisp, it's solid and it's cool. It's weird and it's kind of peppery too, actually. Now that I'm smelling it out of the atomizer, yeah, it's it's got a pepperiness to it as well. It's such an odd fragrance. I didn't love this at first sniff when I first smelled it in store years ago. And then over the years, I've really, really learned to appreciate it. And this fragrance, I really like to wear either on its own on a really hot day or in summertime, I like to layer it under other things. Hello, sir. I, I in particularly enjoy layering it under florals because it gives a coldness and a crispness to them. But you still, if you still want that soft floral aspect, sorry, Fritz is just rubbing himself against the camera again, uh, then you still have that softness of florals to take the edge off this one. I haven't smelled Le Papier, which is the new one from Diptyque. And uh, I'm curious to know how that one smells in comparison to this, because in a way, you know, when even though I described frozen skin lotion before, actually, you know, when I think about it, it does, the smell of this reminds me of the smell of paper and that crisp, you know, a, a really crisp, clean sheet of paper. And I'm trying to, what are you doing? <laughs> Okay, that was almost a disaster. So there you have it. They are my feeling fresh and clean fragrances that the ones that my go-tos, the ones that I reach for when I want to feel fresh and clean. I'd be really keen to hear what, which ones you like to reach for. I think I have scope to have a few more in my wardrobe because we do live in such a hot climate and I do go through these fragrances pretty quickly. I mean, just look at the number five 
Low and Au Premier. I've basically been through a bottle of each of those in the last three years, which is quite a lot for someone like me. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining me and, and for requesting this video. Again, I'm sorry it took so long to get around to it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.